At the beginning of the movie we are introduced to a grandfather named Ivan, who is enjoying his old age in a relaxed and peaceful manner. It turns out that Ivan was a former sniper in World War II who won many awards. Then we are shown a girl named Katya, who is Ivan's granddaughter. During this time, Katya lived with grandfather Ivan because her father had died. And her mother has remarried and now lives abroad. On the way home there were three young delinquents named Boris, Vadim and Igor. They suddenly called Katya after seeing Katya's body which was so sexy because she was wearing tight clothes. Vadim and Igor, who were Katya's college friends, immediately came to her. The two of them invited Katya into the apartment to celebrate Boris's birthday party. At first Katya refused because her grandfather Ivan was waiting for her. But after they both begged, Katya finally complied with their request. They immediately gave Katya alcohol. But Katya tries to refuse because she doesn't usually drink alcohol. After they insisted, Katya finally drank it without feeling the slightest fear. They also asked Katya to sing a birthday song because Boris happened to be celebrating his birthday. When Katya sings Igor secretly pours medicine into Katya's drink. After Katya finished her drink, her head immediately became dizzy. <laughs> Knowing that Katya was having a headache, Vadim intended to take her home. But Boris actually banned it. Katya just realized that they meant evil, she tried to escape from there. But they prevented this and raped Katya in turn. <laughs> After finishing, Igor gave a lot of money, and finally Katya was allowed to go home. While crying, Katya walked home and Katya threw away the money. Because after all, lost self-esteem cannot be bought with money. This incident made Katya very traumatized and will leave an impression forever. Ivan, who had just returned home, tried to calm his granddaughter. But he was very surprised to see Katya's thighs bruised and bloodstained. Ivan asked who did all this. Then Katya answered that she had been raped by their neighbor. Ivan, who did not want to remain silent knowing that his granddaughter was being treated in such a barbaric way, immediately planned to kill the three of them. However, when he was about to approach them, Ivan was suddenly stopped by a policeman who was also Ivan's neighbor. This policeman's name is Robbie. Robbie, who really understood Ivan's brutality in the past, tried to ask Ivan carefully. Ivan said that he really couldn't accept it because three naughty people had raped his granddaughter. Robbie tried to calm Ivan and asked Ivan not to be brutal. And he will try to resolve this problem using applicable legal means. Then Robbie asked where Katya was now. Ivan said that Katya continued to languish in the bathroom in a slump. Robbie advised Ivan not to remove the wound so that Katya could use it as evidence. Robbie also promised to help Ivan in handling the case. In the end, Ivan was willing to entrust his granddaughter's case to Robbie. After that, Robbie immediately reported this incident to Robbie's superior, who was a police captain. At that time the captain and the police raided the apartment. The captain took off his clothes and pretended to be a drunkard, so they would open the door. After the door was opened this is what happened. Then the police immediately searched and arrested the three of them. Vadim tried to scare the captain by saying that he was the general's son. However, the captain doesn't care because the law must still be enforced. The captain also had time to interrogate Boris and Igor. After that, they found a cloth that still had Katya's blood stains on it, so the young men could no longer avoid it. When they were about to be taken to the police station, Vadim's father, who was a general, suddenly arrived. Here the general invites the captain to make peace with the promise of some money. But the captain refused and would still take the young men to the police station. Until the general seduced the captain again with the promise of money and position. In the end the captain agreed, and the three young men were deemed innocent. <laughs> On the other hand, Ivan himself is still waiting for developments in Katya's case. Meanwhile, Katya seems very depressed and still often languishes in the bathroom. 
Ivan, who was afraid that Katya would forget herself and end her own life, tried to call a psychiatrist to check Katya's mental state. The doctor who examined her said that Katya's mental health was fine and she would recover soon. A few days later Ivan got a call from his daughter, who said she would come to visit him at home. Ivan immediately told Katya that her mother would be visiting here. But Katya didn't seem to care because she was still depressed. When he got home, Ivan asked Katya to ask about the continuation of the case. But Katya refused and wanted to forget what happened to her. Katya doesn't want everyone to know that she is no longer a virgin and is considered a cheap girl. But Ivan continued to persuade her because justice must be upheld and the young men must receive appropriate punishment. The next day Ivan took Katya to the police station. There, Katya reported what happened to her. However, the investigator instead cornered Katya and accused her of being the perpetrator because she had seduced the young man to get money. Which means that the investigator considers Katya to be a comfort woman. Hearing this of course broke Katya's heart. It turned out that this investigator had been bribed by Vadim's father, Nikolai, to distort the facts so that his son would escape punishment. Скажите мне, зачем мне это надо? Не ваших эмоций. Пригласил вас тот день в квартиру. Да, он и пошел. Да, он. When they got home, Katya and Ivan were very disappointed because law enforcement could not protect their people. Ivan doesn't want to just give up. He plans to take this case to court. Ну, ну, что ты? Что ты, моя дорогая? The next day Ivan came to court bringing all the awards he had received while serving as a soldier. In this way, Ivan hopes that this institution will appreciate him as a hero and can solve the case that happened to Katya. But the prosecutor refused on the grounds that the facts and evidence revealed that Katya had actually offered herself to them to be raped in order to get money. It turned out that this prosecutor had also been bribed by the general. <laughs> Before leaving, Ivan was asked by the prosecutor to advise his granddaughter to stop being a woman who satisfies the lust of naughty men. Hearing that clearly made Ivan not accept it and was very angry. He said that the prosecutor was more despicable than a prostitute because he had sold justice for not much money. <laughs> This is where Ivan thinks that the legal institutions in his country cannot be relied on. And this made the brutality within Ivan stir. Ivan, who is a war veteran, will try the perpetrators in his own way. However, Ivan needs money to execute his plan. As a result, he sold his house in the village to get money. When at home Ivan saw an envelope containing a lot of money. Katya said that Nikolai had given her the money as an apology for his son's actions. Ivan couldn't understand why Katya would accept the money. Because this is tantamount to insulting and assuming that Katya is a paid woman. Then Ivan immediately went to Nikolai's house to return the money. While eating, Katya's condition seemed to improve and she was no longer depressed. But Ivan was still determined to take revenge on the three depraved young men who had raped his granddaughter. Katya told her that her neighbor was out of town for three weeks and left the keys to her house with Ivan. Ivan realized that the apartment was opposite Boris's apartment, so he took advantage of this opportunity to use it as a place to execute his plan. A few days later Ivan went to Moscow to buy weapons without Katya's knowledge. He went to a place selling illegal weapons and asked the dealer to find a sniper rifle. At first this boss didn't want to sell the sniper to Ivan. Because this weapon is not for just anyone. But after Ivan told him that he was a former sniper, the boss immediately showed his weapon. Ivan asked for a sniper with a shooting range of at least one kilometer, several bullets and a silencer. The boss then tested Ivan's ability to shoot long distances. They were very surprised and didn't expect to see an old grandfather like Ivan still able to shoot targets accurately. Even though he has been retired for decades and no longer holds a weapon, Ivan's abilities as a former best sniper are still extraordinary. <laughs> When Ivan returned home, it turned out that Katya's mother was there. Katya's mother didn't forget to buy Ivan clothes as souvenirs. 
But here Katya's mother came just to ask Ivan for money, especially since she knew that Ivan had just sold his garden. Katya's mother also didn't seem to care about what had happened to her daughter. This made Ivan angry, and Ivan immediately told her to go back abroad. The next night Ivan secretly took his sniper rifle to the neighbor's house. Then the next day, while waiting for the arrival of the three young men, Ivan gathered with his friends so as not to be suspected. Not long after, three young men were seen who had just come to the apartment. Then Ivan immediately went to the neighbor's house via the back road. After watching them for a long time, Ivan finally shot at the drink bottle which was kept near Igor. This was done so that the broken bottle would injure Igor's genitals and make it look like an accident. As a result, the genitals that once hurt his granddaughter's heart are now completely destroyed and can no longer be used. Then Ivan immediately cleaned up the place and then returned to join his friends. Not long after, an ambulance arrived to take Igor to the hospital. After that incident the general came and asked what really happened. Boris and Vadim were confused because they didn't hear a gunshot or anything, but suddenly the bottle hurt Igor's genitals. They assumed that maybe this was Igor's fault for not being careful in holding his drink bottle. However, the general immediately suspected that all of this was Ivan's doing. The next day Ivan was approached by Robbie. It turns out that Robbie was ordered by his superiors to investigate Ivan. Robbie said that he really hoped that Ivan had nothing to do with Igor's incident yesterday. A few days later it shows Boris who has just been bought a new car by his parents who work abroad. Ivan also took advantage of this opportunity to carry out his action again. Until Boris started the new car while playing loud music, but suddenly. Ivan deliberately shot at the car's tank to make it appear as if this incident was caused by damage to the car. Then Ivan immediately went to the crowd who were watching the incident. Boris suffered serious burns including burning his genitals. Robbie looked at Ivan and became increasingly suspicious that this incident was Ivan's doing. But until now Robbie has not found any evidence. The next day Robbie came to Ivan's house while grandpa was playing chess. He pretends to be thirsty and asks Katya for a drink. When Katya took a drink he looked for a rifle in the cupboard. But he only saw the key to Ivan's neighbor's house. Katya told him that the neighbor had left the house keys because she was out of town. The scene switches to Vadim who looks shocked by what happened to Boris and Igor. Nikolai said that this was definitely the work of Ivan who wanted revenge. He told Vadim not to go anywhere because Ivan's next target was Vadim. Hearing that made Vadim even more afraid. He didn't want his fate to be the same as his two friends. Before leaving Nikolai gave Vadim a rifle just in case. He also ordered Vadim to shoot Ivan if he came to his house. After that, Nikolai invited his men to search Ivan's house. But after checking the whole room they didn't find any evidence that could imprison Ivan. But unfortunately, Ivan's neighbor, who entrusted him with the house keys, came at the wrong time. She asked for the key, which made Nikolai suspect that Ivan had hidden the sniper in the neighbor's house. We shall leave. At that time, Nikolai immediately took Ivan to his neighbor's house to look for evidence. There, Nikolai searched the house, while Ivan was very panicked because all this time his gun had been kept in the cupboard. But strangely, when they opened the cupboard, it turned out that Ivan's weapon was not there, which made Ivan confused. Chista. Because he couldn't find any evidence, Nikolai forced Ivan to just confess, because he knew that Ivan had done all this. Ivan not wanting to admit it made Nikolai very upset. He threatened to kill Ivan if anything happened to his son, Vadim. Ivan said that Nikolai was too late. Hearing this, Nikolai immediately panicked and immediately went home to save Vadim. When he got home Nikolai banged on the door because it was locked tightly and didn't hear Vadim's voice. When Nikolai shot at the door and suddenly.
It turns out that Nikolai was shot by Vadim, his own son. Excessive fear makes Vadim suffer from mental disorders. On the other hand, Ivan was told by Robbie that he had deliberately moved Ivan's weapon. It turned out that Robbie had taken the key to a neighbor's house, and after moving Ivan's weapon, he returned the key. Robbie promised to keep what Ivan did a secret because he realized that grandfather was a good person who only seeks justice amidst unjust laws. And the movie is over. Thank you for watching. Look forward to the next video.